Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle. For those of you who are brand new around here, we have a lot of new friends recently and I'm so excited because we just hit 1,000 subscribers, which was like a huge milestone for me. It was something that I've been working towards, a goal I've been working towards for a while now. So I'm so grateful for all of you who have been just joining my little family over here and being a part of this channel. I love to make videos every single week all about affordable living and intentional homemaking and today on the channel we're actually gonna take some time to do a few thrift flips now if you've been around for a little while or if you're brand new um, you will know or you will soon learn that I love to go thrifting I love to get a good bargain like I said I'm all about affordable living I love to do thrifting I will link a bunch of my thrift hauls in a playlist below for you guys if you are a thrifter as well but I also love to see kind of the beauty in what could be from an item that I found at the thrift shop. So there's a bunch of stuff that I found over the past few months thrifting that were cool items when I found them, but I knew could have even more potential if I just kind of zhuzhed them up a little bit, got them a little zazzy. So I took some time to do a handful of thrift flips and that's exactly what's going to be in this video today. So I hope that you enjoy these fun little projects that I've been working on. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So I wanted to start off this thrift flip with a few frames that I had actually purchased in a couple of different thrift outings, and I'll link them all below if you've missed any of my thrift outings lately. But I wanted to start by grabbing some digital downloads and creating them in a DIY fashion to look more like a piece of artwork. So I saw this DIY project, I thought it was really neat, so I went onto Etsy, I went to my favorite artist's page, and I purchased three different spring prints that they had done which I thought were absolutely lovely and I then printed them at my local CVS on 8x10 photo paper so obviously it's photo paper so it's really shiny and it has kind of that like glossy feel to it so using Mod Podge we are actually going to get this high shine gloss off of it and what I did was I used the Mod Podge and I kind of painted along the direction of how the artist had already painted to give it some like thicker dimension and to give some life to the actual piece of art and I found this to be actually very therapeutic and fun I really enjoyed just kind of painting over it so like I said I did like thicker pieces in the flower petals and then did an overall kind of gloss on the background just to give a texture to everything and I really loved how these different prints came out. After I was done with this floral print, I went on to sort of this village setting print, this like kind of lakeside home. And I just had fun with different like techniques, with brushstroke techniques. I was doing um, different blotting techniques for the trees and really just trying to add the dimension where I felt like it would look the best. And I really enjoyed, like I said, how all of these came out. There is a third photo that I did, but I didn't actually film myself doing the Mod Podge part because I figured you guys got the point by now. And then once I had these done, I let them dry and I took my three frames that I thrifted and I got them ready to put the art in. As you can see from this clip, the Mod Podge actually adds a lot of really beautiful texture and makes it feel more like a painting and less like a shiny photo print paper. So the first thing that I actually did for this first frame was I decided to put the picture in front of the glass. Originally, I wasn't gonna put the glass in it at all, but I actually ended up using the glass to kind of give some structure to the piece of photo paper. So I put the photo in front of the glass. That way you could actually see the print. And again, it makes it look more like a painting and less like photo paper. Thank you. 
I already have this piece up in my new bedroom and I absolutely love, love, love how it just adds so much beauty to our space. So this next photograph that I'm putting in one of the art pieces, you can see this beautiful church white scenery. I bought this piece from the same artist and I will link their Etsy shop below because I really do love their artwork. But I kept that photo piece in and I just added this new spring photo to it so that I could have a, a new feel for the spring and summer season. And then in this last frame, it's not actually the same size as the 8x10 picture that I originally purchased. Had I realized that I was going to use this frame to begin with, I may have ordered a 5x7 instead of an 8x10, but I originally ordered three 8x10s and I really wanted this last landscape picture to fit into this frame because I just felt like the colors of the frame match so beautifully with the piece of art so I cut out the back paper and then I took out the backing of the frame uh, there was like staples in it so I just removed the staples or pushed the staples up and then I used the old photograph to kind of measure out exactly where I wanted to cut to make the picture fit the frame beautifully so I just used that piece of paper as my template. Once I had finished cutting, I just laid it into the frame, added the backing back and put the staples back down. And I absolutely love how this particular photo looks in this frame. It's stunning, it's beautiful. I think it's kind of my favorite flip of this entire video. For my next thrift flip, what I wanted to do was actually keep the print that was in this frame, but I wanted to liven up the frame. So instead of painting the other pieces like I did with the Mod Podge, I painted this frame with some rub and buff. Now, I have a few things to say about this. I've used rub and buff in the past. I really love it. This particular color is called Antique Gold. I really love the color that this comes out as, but I must say it's not really worth it to use a paintbrush. It has a different look. It gives a different feel and a different vibe than when you use a sponge brush. In the past, I've always used a sponge brush and I couldn't figure out where I placed mine this day and I was trying to get this finished so that I could put it up in my new bedroom. So I decided to use a paintbrush instead and it just did not have the same exact end result that I've had in the past. However, all that being said, I don't dislike it. I really love this color. I think it's a beautiful color. So after I went in with my paintbrush and I painted all of the corners, I then went through with a paper towel and kind of like rubbed it in very nicely. This is not a paint. I don't actually know what rub and buff is. It, but it's a really fantastic product. It really gives some great shine to your photo frames and I love to use it for that reason. So I am really happy with how this came out overall. I love the color. I think it goes so well with the print and I already have this up in our master bedroom and I just think it's beautiful because it's such a gorgeous piece of artwork to begin with. And then for my last thrift flip of this video, I actually want to DIY these two lamps that I got on one of my recent thrifting outings. I love these lamps when I saw them. I thought they were beautiful. I just did not love that they were blue and pink speckled. I thought that was just not really the style that I was going for. So I decided to take some of my paints that I had in our basement and mix them up and create a nice fun color of different like grays and beiges to really have a fun stone look. 
Now I'm gonna start off by saying that this paint was very watery, very runny. I did not shake up the little cans enough, but I eventually got it to a decent consistency. So the next thing that I did once I added all these colors was I added a whole heap of baking soda. A, to kind of dry up some of the wetness in the paint, but B, to give the paint itself a nice texture look for the lamp. I actually really love how this came out because it gave the lamp this really beautiful faux stone feel and look to it once I was all completed. So once I got that kind of mixed in, I then started to paint the lamp and I wasn't like super particular about this or like really clean in my paint lines. I kind of really enjoyed like some of the drips and drops, if you will, of the paint as it went along. It kind of added to the character of this faux stone. And I put this paint on both lamps that I had gotten. I let it dry and then I ended up doing a second coat because they both really needed a second coat but I love this really nice kind of beige color that ended up coming out. And again, the baking soda, it's not showing up super great on camera, but it has such great texture in person and I really love how that all came together. And then to add more of that kind of stone wash feel to the lamps, I took some coffee grounds that we had in the house. Don't worry, it was a coffee that we don't really like and don't drink a whole lot of, so I wasn't completely waiting it and I did a coffee rub on the lamp now I had heard of this before I've never actually given it a try until now but I absolutely love how this came out so what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing handfuls of the coffee and I'm literally just taking my fingers and rubbing it into the lamp as best that I can and kind of going back and forth until I was getting the color that I was desiring for this look. And then I had a wet rag next to me that I would kind of tap out some of the stone and really kind of rub it into the lamp to give it some really nice design and texture. I'm so happy that I decided to do this. Originally I was going to try to do it with dirt, but I had heard about this coffee method at the last minute and was like, well, let me try this. Let me see how it comes together and it came together so beautifully now when I did this I went over the lamp two separate times so I would go through with all of the coffee across the entire lamp kind of wash it down with a cloth and then I went through again a second time and did the rub once more so that I could get a darker look and I just really love how this entire project came out they look so beautiful they look like very expensive lamps and I just purchased two shades from Walmart for a really really cheap price I think I only paid like five or ten dollars for the lampshades so beautiful and they look great on our bedside tables. So I just want to thank you guys so much for being here today. I really enjoyed doing all of these thrift flips. Please comment below with which one your favorite was. Honestly, I thought it was going to be the lamps, but I actually really think it was this simple little gold um, picture frame. I have it actually right here in my bedroom right now, that like gold picture frame with the little landscape in it. I just thought it was such a beautiful and easy little flip. I love doing the Mod Podge sort of combination on the different pictures. I think they came out so beautifully and I, I really enjoyed it how these all came out. So please, let me know in the comments below which of these thrift flips was your favorite and I will be seeing you guys really really soon I'm gonna be doing some spring decorating coming up next so definitely come back subscribe if you have not done that yet give this video a thumbs up and come on back for our next video which is probably going to be a spring decorate with me I can't wait to see you guys then have an amazing week and I will talk to you really soon bye